Well, hello everybody and welcome back. It's Rob from PMDG. Episode 9 in our 737 Small Bites series. This time we're going to be focusing on mouse handling. This is something that may seem like it should be a little bit obvious, but it actually isn't. Going back to the earliest days of flight simulation, when we first started to get the use of the mouse in a flight simulator, it was very focused on the use of the left click, and that has remained true to this day. Back in 2004, a very talented developer by the name of Michael Francis Kakis joined the PMDG team, and he quickly came up with a solution that allowed us to innovate by using the, both the left and the right mouse click in order to accomplish things in the simulator. That has been part of all PMDG products since then. We have brought that into Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'm gonna show you how to implement that in this video. First, a quick demonstration of how mouse click works by default. You can see you have to hover the mouse over a switch or a knob until you see the left rotate or right rotate icon. You'll see that to push a two position switch, it's just a hand with a little finger pointer there and you can kind of click on something to make it work. A knob left, right, and you sort of have to move it back and forth, but then click with the left button in order to rotate the knob right. And then if you want to move the knob back to the left, you have to move the mouse until you see the left rotate icon, and then again click with the left mouse button. This all works well and good in a modern airliner such as the 737. We've got switches of all different sizes and varieties, and sometimes finding that exact spot that you're supposed to click can get a little bit fiddly. If you look up here at the overhead panel, I've got a couple of really good examples. This is a three position switch. In order to move it in two directions, I have to move the mouse around until the arrow points the direction I want it to go and then left click. You'll see a two position switch is far easier. I just kind of reach up and tap on it. We've got another knob here. I have to get the right icon and then click to rotate that knob to the right. And then if I want to move the knob back to the left, I have to find it. There we go. And then rotate back to the left. Two position switches, again, really easy stuff. You just kind of click on them and off they go. So our process is really designed to be more intuitive so that you can just reach for something, left click or right click in order to get the function out of it that you want and it just kind of keeps things simple and a lot less fiddly. So let me switch the sim over really quickly. We've now switched over to do using PMDG's custom mouse handling and although it's the same date and time apparently it's now a sunny day so um, and we're using the PMDG mouse handling. I'll let that metaphor speak for itself. Anyway, so if you'd notice I can come up to the horse knob here and it, rather than having left or right cursors I can just simply click left or right to get the knob to go the direction that I want it to go. I can also scroll the mouse wheel which makes it relatively easy and intuitive as well. But the left and right click if I want to go right, I just click right. If I want to go left, I just click left. I don't have to find a specific mouse cursor. You can see here, right clicking, left, up. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, Asobo. Um, and uh, left click and right click, etc. So let me show you how this works. We've tried to make it fairly simple. There's simply a file that you need to swap, and that file defines the mouse handling in the sim, which is probably more information than you really even need. I'm just going to show you here exactly how it's done. When we installed your 737, we created a directory into which we deposited a whole bunch of documentation. And that's the window here on the right. And you can see that we have in this documentation directory, which is right there, it will vary on your drive depending on where you have Flight Simulator installed. But you'll see that we've got a document here that explains how to do this in detail. So go find this document, read through it, it'll help you out. Um, we know that a lot of people like to see things visually, that's the purpose of this video. But you'll notice these two directories here. Inside the directory, choose the file depending on which mouse handling you want. So we went into the PMDG directory and what we're going to do is we're going to copy it to this location in your 737 installation. So in this case we're going to move the file from here and I'm going to take the 737-700 file and I'm going to drop it right in here. It'll ask to replace it. And important note, 
if you want to do it for the BBJ and the BDSF, you have to move those individually as well. They are all separate. But if we then want to change back to the Microsoft handling later, I just go into the MSFS directory that we included there, move that file over, and you'll get the same results, but it'll be switching you back to the Microsoft Flight Simulator default mouse handling. So all pretty easy and straightforward. Once you've got that file copied over, danger, you do need to quit the sim, get out of it entirely, and relaunch the sim so that the new mouse handling will take effect. There is no way to change that live in real time in the sim. We tried, but we couldn't find a way to make that happen. So uh, once you make this file change, simply exit the sim, come back into it, and you'll have the new mouse handling technique. Now I do want to reiterate one point that Microsoft Flight Simulator sees each of the three 737-700s as an individual airplane. So if you make the change to the 700 passenger airplane, you'll also want to make it for the BBJ and for the BDSF. That way you have the same mouse handling in all three airframes. And likewise, if you want to switch back, just make sure you get all three of them. Okay, so we're back in the sim, and through the magic of editing, we're just going to power right through this load menu here so that I can show you what it looks like once you get back in. Here we are. Okay, now, you'll notice when I hover the mouse over, as I showed you earlier, I can just left-click and right-click. The mouse looks the same, it behaves the same. What changes is that you don't see the little left and right rotate icons. Don't let that throw you off. All switches give you this, this pointer icon, and then you just do what you would do naturally. Left click, right click, depending on which direction you want the switch to go. It makes it a lot less fiddly. You have to think about it a lot less. Just turn the knob or switch the direction you want it to go, and off you go. You can also use the center wheel to scroll it. Whoops, there we are. You can use the center wheel to scroll it so you can go up or down using that. Pretty straightforward and simple. Use this video to remind yourself how to do that if you forget a little bit later. You've also got those instructions that you can rely upon. That should cover things, but one little thing I want to point out, again, if you decide you want to go back, just go back to this directory, find the files in the msfs directory, copy those back over as shown, and you'll be back to the default mouse handling. All right, that's all for now. Thanks again for your support, PMDG. We'll see you real soon.